So in this lecture, we will study liquid coolants for uh, power transformer. We have already seen uh, the various modes of uh, heat transformer, the heat transfer in a transformer. The convection is one of the important modes uh, in the tra heat transformer and it is the, uh, you know, the among the three convection, conduction and uh, radiation. Convection is most dominant uh, mode of heat transformer, heat transfer. <laughs> Now, convection is the transfer of heat by movement of fluid and it is given by Q equals to HA into T2 minus T1, where H is uh, known as convection coefficient, uh, represents the ability of a fluid to transmit heat by natural convection. Of course, you know, you can uh, in general uh, uh, the coefficients may be you know, symbols, so you don't get confused uh, when they are defined, you know, go by them. Now, <laughs> it represents the ability of a fluid to transmit heat by natural convection. It depends on the following factors, density, coefficient of thermal expansion, viscosity, specific heat, thermal conductivity, etc. And then, uh, the coefficient of uh, heat transfer transfer this is uh, overall coefficient actually under identical geometric and thermal conditions oil is about 12 times and water is about 100 times more efficient than air so this is uh, uh, about the um, effect of convection actually so here various uh, coefficients are given here you can see conditions under different conditions of uh, heat transfer and the coefficients, a range of coefficients are given here. So, typically it is oil is about 12 times more efficient than air and uh, water is about 100 times more efficient than air. So, water is cooled exter for external cooling and oil is used uh, inside the transformer. Air has the advantage of readily availability, that is the one of the greatest uh, advantage of this one. Oil you have to, you know, purchase and then even water is also not, uh, you know, completely free, <coughs> even if it is uh, uh, abundantly available. So, air has the advantage of readily availability of unlimited quantity, but the exchange surfaces have to be large actually. So, the, that makes the system very bulky, or transformer very bulky and when the heat is in the order of 100 kilowatts or 100, 100 kilowatts or more, then the, uh, you know, air system loses its significance because of the size of the transformer and then use of water as coolant, where water is used. Water is only used when air cooling is not possible. And this is for, you know, uh, water is outer cooling system actually, uh, uh, the coolant as in, uh, in the outer system, not in inside the uh, transformer. Of course, water, pure water is um, insulating material, uh, but pure water uh, gets contaminated very fast, even a, a, even a small exposure to air is uh, sufficient to, you know, you know, sufficient for the microorganisms to develop very fast and uh, then it uh, subsequently becomes conductive. Therefore, water in direct contact with windings is not uh, advisable. Therefore, it is not inside the tank, but outside uh, the water tank for cooling the oil. So, there will, the outer system will use water in some cases where, you know, indoor or underground systems uh, where adequate air cooling is not possible and also where uh, water is readily available and if it is very cheap, uh, then also a water cooling system uh, will be used because water cooling system has high efficiency as you have just now seen. 
but water needs some power for circulation and unlike air right of course air blast type you ha you have to use fans etc for that also you know uh, power is needed but water definitely needs some power for circulation and precautions must be taken against uh, freezing in pipes where uh, you know temperatures are low so when losses are high use of water enables some very low temperatures such as 20 to 30 degree centigrade the flow can be adjusted depending on the outlet temperature and depending on the cooling requirement and all. so this is a typical of wf transformer cooling system is given here so oil forced and water forced you can see so inside the transformer there are three windings shown here so winding one winding two winding three and here uh, uh, you know this is the uh, oil flow path through this pipe oil will come and then through this this pump will drive the oil okay so this is normally actually the pump is placed at the bottom of the portion in this figure it is shown at the top so here uh, this inside these pipes the oil will flow and these pipes are cooled using this water system this water so this water comes and then cools this uh, these pipes this outer surface of these pipes water will flow <coughs> and inside these pipes this oil will flow so there are two systems please see carefully oil system is oil is in touch with the windings and this oil system moves through these uh, radiator pipes you can say and then uh, these radiator pipes are cooled by water water system this is water inlet and this is water out, outlet you can see this is forced water heat exchanger so this is uh, a typical system where water cooling is used so then uh, this is a transformer uh, in which uh, water cooling system is adopted you can see so oil immersed forced oil water cooled forced oil water cooled series a three phase uh, rectifier transformer this is so uh, you can see uh, let me zoom it so this is about the a, a practical transformer i have shown here and then uh, typical cooling system a typical cooling system has active part oil inside the tank of course you know dry type transformers i am not considering now Th those are uh, uh, dry type transformers will have naturally exposed to the air or some uh, or maybe sometimes uh, uh, epoxy insulation may be in contact with winding and all. so that uh, we have already uh, you know discussed earlier now the cooling system typically uh, inside the tank oil will be there that is active part actually that is considered active part and outside the uh, tank or for cooling the radiator pipes etc air or water is used that is cooler that is called cooler system so movements movements can be either natural or forced so this is a typical cooling system of a transformer so let me draw here this is inside inside uh, the tank uh, there is a so winding you can say and then this is a core this is a core and this is a typical winding a cross section you may consider now this through pipes uh, oil will be circulated outside and these uh, these uh, outside tube of this one may be kept in a uh, cooler system in which uh, uh, water may be used or air may be circulated like this inlet and this is outlet inlet outlet so this is how a typical cooling system uh, will look like and temperature profile uh, in the windings so it is important to know how the temperature profile will be from winding uh, to oil and from oil to outside uh, cooler air so uh, first let us consider variation temperature uh, profile in the windings as inside the tank so 
let me draw the cross section of uh, the you know transformer uh, transformer one of the windings so here you see this is uh, the core actually and then uh, the core inner part of the core like this so this is all cross section of the core actually one side the other set transformer if it is shell type if you consider then you have to extend this this side also this side also transformer is there so just a typically one winding cross section i am drawing here this is one winding okay and then uh, inside the winding how the temperature will be there and then this is this entire empty space wherever this empty space is there this is oil okay this is uh, winding w i have indicated now how the temperature profile will be typically the temperature profile uh, will be like this inside the winding it is actually parabolic because both the surfaces are exposed to oil and they will be at lower temperature and since uh, heat is generated inside the winding it is parabolic like as shown i have drawn just now and the peak uh, temperature will be roughly around the midpoint of the uh, winding width actually this is uh, uh, midpoint of the winding width and a little change will be there here so around 2 degree centigrade drop uh, from the peak to the outer surface is expected uh, then let me okay now uh, after the, uh, at the surface of uh, this winding there will be actually sharp decrease in the temperature along the surface and then this decrease will uh, continue like this and within the oil actually very less uh, temperature difference will be there only at the surface of the winding due to oil the heat is taken away so within one, a few layers of the oil in contact with the winding there will be huge uh, temperature drop after that it is uh, the temperature is uh, you know more or less uh, constant a very little change may be observed typically the uh, temperature difference from this kink you know, after uh, uh, winding this temperature difference is typically around 20 degree centigrade and if you consider from peak from peak means this is the and from peak to the oil normal oil temperature well inside the oil the temperature difference is around 22 degree centigrade so this is how the typical temperature profile in the uh, windings uh, will uh, look like and uh, winding inside the winding it is parabolic surface of the windings a sharp decrease from winding to uh, oil sharp decrease or from oil to uh, winding sharp increase because that's why i have written sharp change depends what uh, the uh, on what that on what this temperature difference will depend it depends on surface heat density as well as fluid velocity means oil velocity and similar changes occurs in you know magnetic circuit and cooling ducts etc wherever uh, they occur so from uh, this metallic portion in which here actually in the metallic portion conduction will dominate right conduction and then outside it is through uh, convection so whenever this kind of uh, you know change uh, occurs the uh, profile will be more or less like this only so this you have to keep in mind and then typical temperature profile in a cooler now after oil uh, uh, oil is exchanged with uh, uh, oil exchanges uh, the heat with uh, cooler uh, outside air or uh, you know water etc so how that will change now cooler surface cooler uh, surface 
cooler wall will be in the outside the transformer you can consider uh, outside from you know, i am drawing a typical schematic here so this is uh, uh, cooler wall you can consider this is cooler wall and this side you consider i i and this side air or water typically for air i am giving the temperature profile actually so this is air so cooler wall separates air or water from oil which is inside the transformer now how the temperature oil temperature will be more or less constant until the cooler uh, you know wall is reached a few layers on the cooler layer, just before the few layers there will be a sharp decrease here and that is inside the oil it is not much outside it is very high actually let me see let me show you and this is along the wall actually more or less same this is conduction again and since it is a metal the temperature is more or less same and along the surface of this wall there will be again a very sharp decrease in the uh, temperature so this is how the typical temperature uh, profile will be now here uh, from this point to this point the temperature variation is uh, around 26 degree centigrade and from this point to this point the temperature is around 36 degree centigrade so it means that this variation typically is around 10 degrees centigrade. So, this is how the typical temperature profile or effect of cooler will be there. So, there will be sharp decrease uh, in the outer uh, surface of the cooler where the air is in touch with it. So, sharp change in oil or air layers adjacent to the surface only will occur and very little change elsewhere in within the oil or within the air. Uh, very little change uh, is uh, uh, observed. So, this is about uh, the typical cooling system of a transformer. We will um, go in detail in the next uh, uh, class onwards. Thank you.